I can select any month from my month year slicer and then select past or future. Now below column chart will show me the future in months including the current month. The number of months I can set from this slider and I can also select my KPI from this slicer. My visual will not only show the future in months or past in months based on dynamic selection, but also with multiple measures all together. Do you want to know how to develop this entire solution? Let's do that. I have this month year slicer and a simple column chart. I have three basic measures, which are total sales, profit, and total cost. For now, I am only using the total sales measure in my visual. The usual behavior of the slicer is to filter the data and show only the selected month years. But since we know our requirement is to show past in months, future in months with any selected measures. So without further ado, let's apply the first step. Click on the data view and click on new table option to create a table. This table is nothing but a duplicate of my existing calendar date table. I will name it as new dim date and then I can just type the name of existing date table to duplicate that. It will create a copy of my existing date table. Next, I need to jump inside the modeling view. Here I have my data model and my new date table. I will create a relationship between both the date tables, but I will have to modify this relationship to make it inactive by default. If you have a question as why I need to do this, then don't skip any part of this video, otherwise you will miss the key concepts of it. So I made it inactive and single directional. I will activate it inside my DAX measure. All right. Before I start creating my master measure, I need to create another custom table to select the past or future period. Name of this table is past or future, and I can keep the column name as same. The rows inside this column will have items as past and future. The most important part in this table is the additional column, which is a multiplier column. For the past, it will be minus one and for future, it will be plus one. Please note that this is very important for this solution. Load this table. Next is to create a numeric range to select the number of months dynamically. I can name it as number of months and then will define the minimum and maximum value of the range. I am using maximum value as 12 and default value as three. You can choose the range based on your requirements. This will add a slicer on my page which will be used to select the number of months. I would like to add the period slicer, but this column need to be sorted based on the multiplier column because the selected value will be multiplied by the number of months selected in the range slicer. I will drag the column to the page, change the visual type to the slicer, and from formatting section, I will change the slicer type to the tile. Adjust the size and place it at the required location in my report page. Now I will create my measure. First, I will create the total sales measure. Then, I will let you know how you can also utilize an another interesting feature to select any measure or multiple measures easily. I will click on New Measure and name my measure as New Total Sales. Here, I will create three variables. The first variable is called as from date. Inside this, I will validate if the selected value from the past future slicer is equal to past, then it will have max of the dates from the first date table which is used in the year month slicer. Else for the future month, it will show minimum date value. This is required because I want to include the selected month as well in the calculation. And if you don't want to include selected month, then we can just use it as opposite of it for past and future slicer selection. The second variable is called as past future month shift. Here, I just need to multiply the selected value of the multiplier with the max value of number of month slicer. This multiplier has value is minus one for past and plus one for future, which will be multiplied by the number of months so that it will know how many months is to be shifted from the selected month year. The last variable name is called as period shift. I will use dates and period function. And in its first argument, I will use the dates from the new date table. Basically, this will be used in the axis of my visual and this will decide how many months to show for past or future. Finally, in return statement, I will calculate the total sales, but I need to remove filters from the old date table and keep filter on the period variable so that this new filter will be applied. Since I have an active relationship between my date tables, I will activate them using use relationship function. And this is the complete measure, which can be used in my column chart. If it throws this error, means you have also used the parameter value instead of the column name in the number of months section here, change it to the column name. 
and you will not see that error. Before I use this measure, I need to sort the year month column of the new date table based on the sort helper column. This column is nothing but the year and month number concatenated to form a numeric value, which can be used to sort the year month text column. Now select the column chart, and then change the year month column from the old date table to the new date table, and the total sales measure to the new total sales measure. This new on object feature is really amazing. All right, with this, we are now able to get the solution working for the total sales measure and our visual is able to show the number of months for past or future. I will now copy the entire expression of my measure, and I will use the same to create the total cost measure. Only thing I need to change is the name, and the total cost measure reference in the calculate part. The new total profit measure is nothing but the difference between the new total sales and the total cost. Now, click on modeling tab and create a new field parameter. For this parameter, I will add my all three new measures. If required, I can assign the name for this parameter as select KPI and also I can change the names of these measure to total sales, total cost and total profit. I am using a dot in the last because I already have these names in my old measures. It will create a slicer on our report page with the measure names. This I can use to select a single measure or the multiple measures. Now select the visual and change the total sales measure. At this place, I will now use my newly created field parameter. Now my solution is almost ready. I can select a month year, and it will show the past or future number of months and the selected measures. This master measure is going to be very useful for your Power BI projects. Many times, I have seen people asking questions related to showing past in month or future in months, but this single solution is enough to answer all such questions. In our previous video, I demonstrated the new card visual, and I can even use that visual with the field parameter to show all three KPIs. If you have not watched that video, please check it out, the link is here on the top. I have selected only two measures, and both are visible in my card visual, I will quickly format this visual. Thanks for watching, if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel for many such interesting videos on Power BI.